to the year 1997. Okay? 1997, going into 1998, was a critical year for me. Because at this particular point in time, life had gotten a little bit more technologically advanced than it had been prior. My generation was very, very excited about this device that I'm showing you right now. Then as 1999 came, we got excited about this device, the Game Boy Color. Back in 1997, 1998, 1999, when I used to go outside, I would go outside and I wouldn't come back until nighttime. Sometimes, my friends and I would try to sneak back into my house in order to get something to drink, get a snack, and sneak in so that my mother wouldn't see me. She would see me. Sometimes, I might have went outside without my bike, and then a couple hours later, I decided, hey, I want to go get my bike. And I would try to go back to sneak it out. And my mother would tell me, hey, stop coming in and out of the house. Either stay outside or stay in the house. If you do this again, you're going to stay in. And that was very, very harsh punishment for my generation. When we went outside, it was daytime. We came back in, it was nighttime. I didn't start using the internet computers until the year 2000. In the year 2000, I got my first laptop. The internet service provider that I had was called Net Zero. Then I got AOL after that, the dial-up, which means when you connect to AOL, you have to stick it into, you have to, you have to connect to the internet via a phone cord, like a, a landline cord. You stick it into the computer, stick it into the phone, uh, the phone port, and then this screen pops up, you dial up, and then you connect to American Online. I used to go into chat rooms. And in these chat rooms, I would cuss people out. As a 10-year-old boy, it was exciting. I would call people the B-word, say F you to people. The idea that I was interconnected with people all over the globe was brand new to me. And I couldn't handle myself. Couldn't control the sensation to just blurt out, hey, you stupid B-I-T-C-H. You gotta understand, back then, the whole concept of connecting to the internet, social media... YouTube, Instagram, all of these things were 20 years, were, were years and years away, you know, years and years away. Society has not, had not been introduced to it yet. Yes, the internet has existed since the early 90s, but only privileged people were able to access it at that particular point in time. What I want to speak about is this. Back in 1997, 1998, 1999, 2000, it was very common for me to walk around in my apartment complex and bump into a group of guys like this. These guys, you know, did not wear European fashion clothing. These guys generally dressed in baggy clothing. You know, it wasn't uncommon for a few years later for some of these, these individuals to be killed. And it was kind of routine for these individuals to be killed. As a young boy, I didn't understand why. These were my brother's friends. They were older than me. And they made these kind of characters made me feel cool. Because they called me Little Larry, after my big brother Larry. So that gave, that made me feel like a prince in my apartment complex. You know, I was hanging with kids my age, but these guys were the cool people. At the time, they seemed much older than what they really were. They were really, they were really just in high school. I was in elementary school. But they seemed like they were in their 40s to me at that time. Now times have changed. It's been 20 years since this particular time. Now these young men that I used to see in my neighborhood, hanging out with my older brother, they now look like this. And now my generation is in their 30s. So times have de definitely changed. And now it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's different. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but let's just say this. Raekwon the chef, this is him. Young, when he was younger. This is him as an older man. Raekwon the chef is in his 50s now. But he still dresses like a young hip-hop guy. Because he came up in that particular generation. There was a point in time when men, black men, didn't dress like this when they reached a certain age. You know, it was very common for black men in the 90s 
who are above 40 or 50 to dress in casual wear or suits. There's a new generation around now. The people who are in their 50s, 60s, and even 70s. The guys who used to be the youngsters that I used to bump into in my apartment complex. These guys are now the older men. These guys are now senior citizens, middle-aged. And I just thought about that today. They're not in their 20s anymore. I witnessed them when they were in their 20s. I was 9, 8, 7. But I witnessed them when they were in their 20s. And I actually got to see a generation grow old. And I don't know what the point of this video is, but life is something. Just like I was that little boy observing these guys in my apartment complex. A whole cycle has gone by. And when I was in my 20s, late teens, there was a younger generation that was observing me. In, in their apartment complex, you know. And uh, now I'm in my 30s. And sooner or later, I'm going to be old. And, you know, one good thing about the whole cycle of life, getting older, is that people who are older become more like you. Back in the days, you had to hide your tattoos. You had to hide your urban wear. Now, you might get interviewed by a guy like this. Peace.